I'm Lynn Packer. This is my video op-ed about Utah's flim flam man, Tim Ballard. Ballard founded Operation Underground Railroad, OUR. Their tagline is, We Rescue Kidnapped Children from Slavery. It's a paramilitary group. They rescue abducted kids from sex slavery, which means kids who are kidnapped by pedophiles or by traffickers or pimps who sell to pedophiles. Here's a painting of one of their rescued children. The painting was done by Utah pro-Trump artist John McNaughton. On one side of the tracks, he shows original abolitionists like Abraham Lincoln, shows Tim Ballard. Then on the other side, there are modern-day abolitionists like Tony Robbins, Mia Love, and Glenn Beck. One McNaughton painting depicts a very tough Donald Trump standing on a snake. Don't tread on me. Another shows former President Barack Obama standing on the Constitution, crushing it. Ballard's OUR wingman is Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes. Reyes is up for re-election this year and was endorsed by President Donald Trump. Ballard and Trump are also close. They're seen here at an event at the White House on human trafficking. This is what Trump says about child sex trafficking. This is really an invasion of our country by human traffickers. These are people that are horrible people bringing in women mostly, but bringing in women and children into our country. Then to help justify his wall, he said, human traffickers and sex traffickers take advantage of the wide open areas between our ports of entry to smuggle thousands of young girls and women into the United States and to sell them into prostitution and modern-day slavery. When he was at the White House, Ballard talked about a New York girl who he said escaped sex slavery and was raped 60,000 times in eight years. He said, this is hard to hear, but this is the truth. This little girl, and this is very typical, raped for money every day, 30 to 40 times a day. If that's not a crisis, I don't know what is. Had there been a wall, a barrier, this little girl likely would have been saved. The Washington Post covered the event. It said in his State of the Union address, the president referred to thousands of young girls and women being smuggled between ports of entry. The Washington Post goes on to say it's unclear where Trump got that statistic, but he appears to have picked it up from a conversation with Tim Ballard during a White House event on human trafficking. In an opinion column for the Deseret News, Ballard wrote that the State Department reports that around 10,000 children are smuggled into the U.S. annually and forced into the commercial sex trade. Columnist Nicholas Kristof, who is an anti-trafficking advocate, was critical of Trump's position. He wrote, few people on earth are so exploited as children trafficked into the sex trade, and now they are being exploited again by President Donald Trump. Yet it's increasingly clear that this is less about protecting children and more about exalting Trump, whose administration is actually prosecuting fewer traffickers and making it harder for some trafficking survivors to get help. Here's my synopsis, or Tim Ballard in a nutshell. He's a flim-flam man who uses fear-mongering and tear-jerking to solicit donations for Operation Underground Railroad. The way Ballard portrays it, there's a pedophile kidnapper behind every bush. His donation solicitation pitch is a variation of the communist behind every bush, Red Scare fomented by Senator Joseph McCarthy to incite fear and rally public support. Ballard took a real and serious threat and magnified it, maybe thousands of times, turning it into a conspiracy theory. Ballard ripped a page from the Donald Trump playbook. Trump wrote, People want to believe that something is the biggest and the greatest and the most spectacular. I call it truthful hyperbole. Truthful hyperbole is a euphemism for deceit. Here are a few OUR catchphrases. Human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. Ballard must have said that thousands of times. Another, 
Internationally, every 30 seconds, a child is stolen, either for sex, for slave labor, or organ harvesting. Two to five million children are trafficked for sex worldwide. The State Department reports that around 10,000 children are smuggled into the U.S. annually and forced into the commercial sex trade. It's prevalent, much more than people realize. Human trafficking happens everywhere, even in Utah. A lot of the women are being kidnapped here in Utah. Here's some more It Can Happen Here abduction and fear-mongering. This is from an interview Ballard did in July. He starts off by saying in Europe, kids are snatched mostly on the street corner. But he said in the United States, it's online. Every child is vulnerable that has internet access and every pedophile that has that same access has a weapon to get that child. But when kids disappear, when kids get kidnapped, every time when we find a kid, every time there's this long trail of contact with their predators online. The predators come in wanting to befriend your child on Facebook or follow them on Instagram. Slowly, they kind of lure them in, and then they find out where they are, and they grab them. It was during that same interview that Ballard showed what is his frequent disregard for truth. He said, Amnesty International came out a year or two ago and said we were all for legalizing the sex trade everywhere. And it's like, children would be raped. Don't do this. You can't do this. Children have to be put first. The truth is, Amnesty International recommends legalizing consensual sex work. They say laws on sex work should focus on protecting people, and they're referring to prostitutes, from exploitation and abuse. But then they go on to say, Amnesty International's position that forced labor, child sexual exploitation, and human trafficking are abhorrent human rights abuses which, under international law, must be criminalized in every country. In terms of OUR news coverage, Utah's mainstream news outlets have been cheerleaders, not fact-checkers. Uh, TV news accounts, newspaper reports, Utah news media have abetted OUR fundraising. Why ruin a good story? An exception, KUTV's Rod Decker. Rod Decker reported on the announcement of OUR's first movie, The Abolitionists. There was a press conference, and Tim Ballard is seen there with the governor. Of course, Sean Reyes was also there. KUTV's report was different from others. Rod Decker did a live shot from the Capitol, and he focused on the question, are Utah children really being abducted into sex slavery? He has made sex trafficking a focus of his administration here in Utah, but little sex trafficking seems to take place in Utah. For three years, the FBI has conducted sweeps against sex trafficking in cities nationwide. Last year, they conducted raids in 136 cities, including Salt Lake City. Nationwide, they rescued 149 minors in the sex trade and busted 150 pimps exploiting those minors. But they found no sex trafficking in Salt Lake City. And in three operations in three years, they have never found any sex trafficking in Salt Lake City. Here's how OUR thwarts negative media coverage. Requires all employees, even volunteers, to sign non-disclosure agreements, NDAs. We'll sue someone who has an NDA if they talk to the press. Only grants interviews with reporters who would provide positive coverage. Threatens to sue reporters who would write critically about OUR. In January, OUR's attorney wrote a cease and desist letter to Las Vegas reporter Damian Moore. He accused Moore of fabricating drama. He denied any OUR wrongdoing. He said in the letter, to imply OUR has misused or misuses non-contingent charitable donations from its volunteers, partners, or affiliates is patently false. So I gave him a call. He would not explain to me how he knew that OUR has never misused charitable donations. Said he would have someone from OUR respond. No one did. My multiple direct requests to OUR for comment have gone unanswered. So I did a little fact-checking. 
OUR fundraisers knew or should have known they had no proof for many of their claims. They knew or should have known and told donors about scientific information about pedophiles along with credible estimates of children kidnapped for sex. OUR's primary purpose when it was formed was to produce an action-packed reality TV series about its militia rescuing child sex slaves. At the very outset, traffickers and their child victims were movie props. The nonprofit's officers and directors had an incestuous relationship with the for-profit movie company's officers and directors. OUR has never had an independent board of directors as nonprofits should. Instead, officers and directors are mostly a family and friends of Tim Ballard affair. OUR's president, Kelly Wilson, is also the organization's purported independent auditor. Let me show you some of the incestuous connections I just talked about. Jerry Gowan is the CEO. He was a college roommate with Ballard. The CFO is a sister, the press spokesperson, another sister. The one of the directors on the board of directors is a brother-in-law. And another director is a sister. And as I said, OUR's president also serves as OUR's accountant. It's a colossal conflict of interest. It's Kelly Wilson, who also serves as a board member. He's the one that prepares the tax returns. It's the one record that the public has access to. And he signed that. OUR claims that there's a third-party accounting firm that conducts annual audits. It will not disclose who the third-party auditor is if it's not Wilson's firm. I don't know. And Wilson declines comment. I'd like to talk a little bit more about Ballard's and Reyes's fastest growing claim. Remember, that's the one where they say that uh, human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. It actually goes back to 2010 or earlier, well before there even was an OUR. And here are the facts. That neither one will document the claim. Neither originated the assertion. As I said, it goes back at least to 2010, to a United Nations report. Even so, the claim was human trafficking still one of the fastest growing criminal activities globally. And the UN report cited no study. Even had there been proof a decade ago, there's no study that shows it's true today. OUR's fastest growing claim that's used to solicit money may be used illegally. Utah's communication fraud law makes it illegal for anyone to devise a scheme to defraud another or to obtain from another money or anything of value by means of false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, promises, or material omissions. OUR's fastest growing claim combined with other false claims and material omissions about child sex trafficking could subject Ballard and others to criminal prosecution. There is breaking news associated with this video op-ed. This just in, I've been made aware that complaints have been forwarded to the Davis County Attorney's Office in Farmington for a criminal investigation. Is it possible that another type of crime, not human trafficking, is the fastest growing? Here's what some others say. Cyber theft is the fastest growing crime in the United States by far. That's what President Trump says. Cyber attacks are the fastest growing crime. That may be slightly different from cyber theft. Corporate theft, shrinkage, that's employee theft, is the fastest growing crime in the United States. It's bigger than identity theft, cyber fraud, credit card theft. That's according to the FBI. And elder abuse cases each year, 5 million, is actually equal to the combined total of child abuse and domestic violence cases. Ballard's deception may put children in greater danger. He cites the unproven claim that trafficking of all types is the fastest growing. This circle represents all types of human trafficking. He then talks about the very tiny fraction of all human trafficking, children who are kidnapped or forced into sex slavery, that is, for sexual abuse by pedophiles. That's represented by this small circle. It's a bait-and-switch scheme. 
He first talks about the big numbers and then switches over to the tiny numbers. The danger, it diverts attention of worried parents and donor money away from exposing the types of pedophiles who sexually abuse children in vastly far greater numbers. It can happen here. It is kids being abducted and then pimped to pedophiles as sex slaves. OUR fundraisers have always had a difficult time connecting their movie-making theme, that is, rescuing abducted sex slaves, with their money-raising theme of instilling fear in parents that their kids could easily end up being sex slaves. Let's take a look. Who are the most likely child sex predators? Not stranger pedophiles who kidnap children for their own gratification, not slave traders who abduct then sell kidnap kids to pimps for commercial sex rings. The far more likely predators are known to the child and his or her parents. Often family members like fathers, brothers, uncles, neighbors, scoutmasters, fellow church members. Here's an example, Utah's most recent highly publicized pedophile case. Convicted pedophile Sean French started having sex with his 14-year-old victim while living in her home as a family friend. Perpetrators, such as acquaintances of a victim's family, present a vastly more likely sexual assault threat than a kidnapper abducting a child into a commercial sex ring, which may have never happened even once in Utah. Here are three OUR deceptive practices. Making unproven claims while soliciting donations omitting material, key facts about child sex victimization, about how most children are abused by pedophiles, diverting donors' money and the public's attention away from protecting a higher number of kids from sexual attack. Operation Underground Railroad is a charity scam. OUR, above all, is a fundraising machine that uses frightening, unproven statistics to solicit donors. Last year, it collected $21 million. OUR still had $30.8 million in cash and investments. Why is it still raising money? Whoops. Maybe OUR is not a scam. Attorney General Reyes pronounced OUR clean. He assured donors that OUR is not one of those corrupt nonprofits they might have heard about. I've sat on maybe over a dozen nonprofit boards during my career, he said. I know there is a lot of corruption, a lot of fraud, and a lot of ego in the nonprofit world. I saw none of that. And I really looked hard at Operation Underground Railroad. No way can you have the success that they've had. No way can you raise money like they have. No way can you get the media attention. I looked at them hard, and I could find nothing wrong. Is there anything wrong with hosting a COVID-19 super spreader event to raise money, especially if you have $30 million in the bank? On July 30th this year, Ballard and Reyes held a fundraising event in St. George where about 3,000 people were packed closely together, most of them unmasked. Ballard and Reyes made their arrival by helicopter. And here you see the crowd marching toward the park most of them not wearing masks. Let's cut to the chase. Tim Ballard is a bullshit artist, one who made $343,000 in 2018. How can I tell he is? I wrote the book, literally, about the Mormon Church's most infamous bullshit artist, Paul H. Dunn. Paul Dunn, in his day, was the most popular and best-known Mormon general authority. Here's the cover of my book. He claimed to have been a professional baseball player. That wasn't true. He also claimed to have been a World War II hero called by God. Let's take a look at that. One of Dunn's more dramatic stories is about the Guam landing. He said he was in the seventh wave and had to wait ashore under heavy gunfire. Did you ever try to run in water up to your chest, loaded down? You don't move very fast. And you're pushing with the butt of your rifle the dead bodies and wounded bodies of your friends and associates you've been training with. And I was one of the first ashore that morning. And I dug my first foxhole with my fingernails. 
And just as I crawled into that mucky hole, an ambu gun opened up. It shoots about 700 rounds a minute. And it went down my right arm and took off my identification bracelet. And I rolled over and started to talk to Heavenly Father. And he answered me. The truth is, the American forces landing on Guam was unopposed. There were no dead bodies in the water. Dunn made up the story about how God saved him from certain death because God had a special mission for him, to preach to the youth of the LDS Church. Perhaps Dunn's best known story is how his buddy, Harold Brown, died in his arms. It's a tearjerker. But what helped most to break the story and it was a difficult story to break, is when I tracked down Brown, alive and well, living in Missouri. Here's the parallel. Ballard tells numerous called by God stories. While working as a federal Homeland Security agent in California, God inspired him to transfer to DHS's office in Utah. While working for DHS in Utah, God inspired him to quit his job and found Operation Underground Railroad. While on an OUR mission near the Dominican Republic border, God saved him from being killed by heavily armed child traffickers. Ballard's miracle story. It occurred when Ballard and his OUR team had been gathering intelligence in a remote village on the Dominican Republic-Haiti border. As the team tried to leave, they were suddenly surrounded. But then when they were done, they decided, why not just kill them and take their cars and take their money and take everything they, they have? And so they surrounded us. And so we had nothing. It was just us and them. Us with nothing, them with 400 weapons pointed at us. And so I did something that was not necessarily tactically sound, but I felt I should. I went into one of our cars. I closed the door. I pulled out my tattered copy, my missionary copy of the Book of Mormon and I just held it because right? that's what we needed. We needed an angel. We needed a miracle. And, and I remember consciously thinking to myself, is this it? Am I going to leave my wife a widow? Am I going to leave my children without a father? The scripture that saved my life from traffickers is Alma chapter 58 verse 11. I have been given assurances of the Lord that this work is to go on. And when I stepped out of the car, I looked up after in this state of prayer and meditation and pondering this scripture, and everyone had gone. And my operators told me, we don't know what happened, they just walked away. In another version of the story, some of Ballard's team members were armed. That mission, to rescue a supposed kidnapped child sex or labor slave, was a failure. God saved Ballard, but not the child. Ballard uses prayer to inspire donor confidence. Here you see Reyes and Ballard praying during a live, ongoing rescue. Here are some other examples. And by the way, if their prayers were really effective, they wouldn't need guns. All those miracles began because of prayer, because of the prayer on that street that led us to those children, and so many more have been rescued because of prayer. We know that we can only do so much we must rely on God. A word about cons and celebrities. Back to Paul Dunn for a second. He's seen here cutting the ribbon at a Utah resort with Marie Osmond. The Osmonds are among many famous Mormons attracted to and by Dunn. That resort, by the way, was part of a massive fraud perpetrated by this man, who was later charged and convicted. Dunn, who was heavily involved in the scam, escaped prosecution. Celebrities have also been attracted to and by Tim Ballard. Here are a few examples. Derek Huff, politicians Jason Chaffetz and Orrin Hatch, Pittsburgh Steeler coach Mike Tomlin, Mexico President Fox, Elizabeth Smart, and Glenn Beck. For these Mormon hucksters, the pattern is the same. Establish a story that God has chosen you for a special mission. Quench an enormous hunger for fame. Draw in celebrities to enhance fame and build confidence. Tell and retell the stories to as many people as possible. Dunn used humor, Ballard more often tears, that he could turn on and off like a switch. And monetize stories with books, tapes, and in Ballard's case, YouTube, 
and other schemes. OUR produced three movies, The Abolitionist that flopped at theaters but is now available on DVD, Operation to Saw that was first on Amazon Prime, it's now available on YouTube, and Sound of Freedom, it's an action feature with actors, it's scheduled for a release this year. This op-ed focuses on Operation Toussaint. Amazon viewers gave Operation Toussaint a five-star rating. OUR claims that it raised $3 million in a test internet release before going on Amazon. While on Amazon Prime, they claimed it got 1 million views. It's recently been posted for free on YouTube. The movie, in part, tells Ballard's backstory. He worked for Homeland Security near the Mexican border. He trained foreign law enforcement to deter child abuse and trafficking. He prayed, was inspired by God to transfer to Utah. Based here, he trained in Haiti and Colombia. He was frustrated that he was not permitted to help rescue Gardy, a three-year-old boy kidnapped from a church parking lot in Haiti. He fasted and prayed and was inspired to leave and form OUR. And as he tells it, Gardy is the kid whose story created Operation Underground Railroad. Utah media gave the movie positive, fact-check-free coverage. Like this newspaper article, television stations covered it, and typically they would say something like, Operation Tucson is alternately heartbreaking, terrifying, and inspiring. Here's the storyline. It's OUR's third or fourth military-style op to find Guardy Marty. It's after a previous sting operation to take down pimps who may have abetted Guardy's kidnapping and sold him on for sex or labor. But the child trafficking suspects paid bribes and escaped prosecution. OUR met with Haiti's president and attorney general who committed to fire corrupt judges and rearrest the pimps. Operation Toussaint's mission Rearrest, who they say is a kingpin organized crime pimp, a madam, and the other release pimps, and find out who took the bribe money. Here's my movie review and bullet points. Multiple Emmy winners produced a very subpar documentary. The film fails to meet important traditional journalistic standards. It's beyond promotional, it's propaganda. Even as OUR propaganda, journalism standards aside, it's very poorly written, shot, and edited. Viewers are left to believe the kidnapper's main motive was to sell Guardy as a sex or labor slave. While Amazon viewers give it five stars, I give it zero. Watch the movie and give it your own rating. Plus, I'm not going to summarize the story, so you may want to watch at least the trailer then the rest of my op-ed will make more sense. The movie deceives by what it fails to disclose. The FBI, besides local police, had investigated the Guardi kidnapping and identified likely perpetrators long before OUR was involved. Guardi's father, Gesno, was not a pastor, but a Mormon bishop. The two suspects were Mormons who knew the father and Guardi. The main Mormon suspect had been accused of embezzling from the church and had left the flock. The other ran an orphanage. Gesno Marty also ran an orphanage, funded by Utah Mormon donors. Ballard refers to it as a safe house. It's unlikely the main kidnapper's motive was selling Guardy for labor or sex. Operation Toussaint is the follow-up to an earlier sting operation where Ballard in an attempt to rescue Guardy, posed undercover as a possible pedophile wanting to purchase two children from the Mormon suspect's orphanage. They hoped to find Guardy being held at the orphanage. He was not there, but as a consolation, they busted the Mormon kidnap suspect for selling Ballard two kids. Here you see Ballard paying cash to the orphanage owner. The impression is he's buying kids to use as labor or sex slaves. Ballard is correct. He could have been a pedophile or a child sex slave trader. 
but it's more likely the orphanage owner thought she was facilitating an illegal adoption which were not unusual and were very expensive. Here are some facts the documentary does not disclose. Before the 2010 Haiti earthquake, near the time Gardy disappeared, UNICEF estimated that 400,000 children, about 1 in 10, were living in an orphanage. Many were abandoned by their families in the desire to have their child raised outside of extreme poverty, often with the hopes of their child being adopted and raised in a rich Western nation. Likewise, there are local Haitian adoption agencies which require adoptive parents to support their child while awaiting the completion of the process, often $200 per month in a country where most people live on less than a dollar a day with the total fees often amounting to $25,000. Check out this CNN report on Haiti orphanages. An estimated $100 million a year is being donated to orphanages in Haiti by church groups and nonprofits, mostly in the United States. The nonprofit LUMO says most of that money never reaches the children who lack basics like food, water, medical care, and education. We have to educate the donors and the volunteers that for all of your best intentions, if you are giving money to orphanages, you are helping to drive trafficking in Haiti. Lumo says Haiti doesn't have an orphan crisis, it has an orphanage crisis. Unscrupulous people have seen that the orphanages are a way to make money, and they prey on the most vulnerable people in their communities. Anne Elizabeth Moore is an investigative reporter who writes about trafficking. She asks, Have we found any effective means to combat human trafficking in any area of the globe? No, she says. And the rescue industry, and she means organizations like OUR, by diverting that funding and obscuring the real problems of human trafficking, is making it worse in which sex trafficking only plays a tiny, tiny part worldwide. Sort of like the illustration I showed you before. Individuals cannot be permanently rescued without enacting national long-term poverty elimination policies. I want to toss in some information I just came across about the current state of Gesno Marty's orphanage. OUR recently appointed Jeff Frazier to direct its financial support of the orphanage. He's seen here in front of the building. Remember, that's the one funded by Utah donors. Frazier, in a video plea, requests donations. He said the generator quit. There's no electricity. The water pump quit. There's no running water. He says there's no washing machine to wash clothes for almost 200 orphans. And he said a cook told him there are maggots in the rice. I wonder what's going on. Okay, it's time to shift gears and talk about the movie's claim that OUR convinced Haiti's president and attorney general to rearrest traffickers who paid bribes to get out of jail and to fire corrupt judges who took bribes. Ballard and Congresswoman Mia Love, who is of Haitian descent, did meet with Haiti's president and attorney general. Ballard complained that pimps were freed after bribing multiple judges. The documentary shows a photo of Haiti's top minister of justice as one of the bribe recipients. Ballard's movie also accuses another justice official of accepting a bribe. Did Haiti's president and attorney general fire corrupt judges at OUR's request? Multiple scenes make the firing claim. Two video segments name corrupt judges. Three segments show images of fired judges who allegedly took bribes. One purports to show fired judges getting in a car surrounded by an angry crowd. Is it true that OUR convinced the Haitian president and attorney general to fire corrupt bribed judges? and to rearrest child sex slave traffickers? Are the judges shown in the movie the ones who accepted bribes? The documentary asserts multiple times that firings took place. It was a matter of months. We find out that he had identified the judges who were corrupt in this case and had them ripped from the bench. The first part was to fire those judges. And I've done this. O 
OUR's firing and arrest claims are likely false and were likely used to deceive donors. Ballard and Reyes offer no proof Haiti fired or prosecuted any judges who they say were bribed. They provide no proof the government rearrested and prosecuted the traffickers they claim bribed the judges. The documentary showing and naming of judges without giving any proof they were bribed is journalistically reprehensible. Attorney General Reyes invited the Haitian AG and his entourage to Utah for an awards ceremony. It's possible those are fake awards to make it look like Haiti dealt with the bad guys. Later in the documentary, as operatives prepare to strike and arrest a pimp, it's disclosed that OUR never knew who was bribed. The plan was to rearrest the madam, the pimp, and pressure her to confess and reveal who she bribed. We know that she paid $80,000 uh, to get to someone to get out of jail. We really want to understand where she got $80,000 from. We believe a criminal organization supports her. So she's backed by someone. So we want to find out who paid you the $80,000 and who within the government did you give that $80,000 to. OUR's pre-strike training session at the hotel is reminiscent of Keystone Cops movies. Now keep in mind, OUR's main mission was to find out what government officials were bribed. They plan to swoop in in full body armor and arrest a madam who is on the street with her girls. And on the street, get her to fess up and rat out corrupt judges. Before the madam take down, there is Keystone Cop style weapons training at the hotel. OUR apparently needs to train some local jump team recruits on how to use weapons and take down suspects. It looks like the volunteers had no prior SWAT style training. Jump team members are told someone might get stabbed or shot, so there are first aid kits in all the vehicles. We've got a number of these kits that are going to be spread out in the vehicles. Um, these are what we call blowout kits. So if any, if any, is anybody in here familiar with medicine besides the fire mentioned? Uh, with emergency. Okay, so um, then none of this stuff is going to matter to you. As you just saw, the team was asked if anyone was familiar with the kits that is able to give first aid if someone is stabbed or shot. The video shows that not Reyes or Ballard or any jump team member says he has medical training. Then the instructor says that the kits won't matter. And they proceeded with the mission anyway, medical preparation be damned. The OUR strike force left the hotel and proceeded to Port-au-Prince's red light district where their intelligence and recon indicate the madam, the one they previously arrested, but who they claim bribed her way out, will be on the street. The video shows a Keystone Cops-like arrest of an unarmed pimp as if she were a heavily armed drug or arms dealer. The greatest danger was probably strike force team members shooting each other or a bystander. Finally, the moment of truth, the interrogation. Who did the madam bribe? She's seen here still with a lollipop in her mouth. Operation Toussaint was a bust, a total failure. Guardy remained missing. The movie's big finish never materialized. It never revealed who was bribed. Maybe nobody was bribed. It does not say what happened to the madam. OUR won't answer questions about the movie. But it was not a failure in the sense that OUR says millions watched it, it got a five-star rating, and the movie helped the nonprofit raise millions of dollars and still counting. 
Perhaps the most awkward moment in the movie, and what probably should be the most embarrassing for OUR, is where Reyes decorated the Haitian AG for bravery and for firing judges who were probably never fired. I already told you about Reyes bringing Haiti officials to Utah for more awards. This is from his website. He said they got the awards for their efforts fighting human trafficking and corruption in their country. Did they really fight corruption? Or is it possible they themselves were corrupt? Let's start with the Attorney General. Was Damius the fraud fighter Ballard and Reyes make him out to be? He resigned from office in late 2018 after being accused of corruption and incompetence. It was alleged that he had the home of one of Haiti President Moise's political rivals demolished without legal authority. He was also accused of mishandling the investigation into charges that Moise embezzled hundreds of thousands of dollars of government funds that had been earmarked for badly needed social programs. What about President Havanel Moise? Besides being accused of corruption after he took office, he was also suspected of fraud before. Certainly Ballard, Reyes, and Congresswoman Love would have known, or at least should have known that, before portraying him as an honest politician. Meanwhile, OUR's fear-mongering, tear-jerking fundraising pitch will keep donations rolling in. I want to conclude by reading some comments from some of those who watched the movie. I sobbed, I cheered, I screamed. God sent Tim and his group. People don't like to talk about sex trafficking, but the problem, it's happening. It's in our neighborhoods. It's all around us. No one but a sicko would give this documentary a one star. I couldn't hold the tears back. I started a Facebook fundraiser. This is by far the best movie I've seen. And finally, one that's the exception I truly believe this is a propaganda film made by the group solely to get donations.